let's design our first page. So here's our designs and we'll be first designing this login page. Now moving from designs to a properly structured widget tree can be tricky, but we've broken it down with a system in two videos, one called mastering layouts and the other called alignment and spacing. I'll be using that method here, but if you want a greater in-depth look, go check those out. Now in this Figma file, I've provided to you every widget that we'll use in this project and they're all right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy these and then paste them over here because we wanna sort of visually build out our widget tree here and then we can add it in Flutter flow. Now, the first step into this system is to identify the atomic widgets. And an atomic widget is just a widget that doesn't take children. And it's normally pretty intuitive which widgets take children and which don't. So we can just start at the top right here and we've got this thing right here, which is going to be an image. So I'm just pressing option or alt on windows and click and dragging it out. And then down here, you might think that this is a text widget, but if you think about what's gonna happen on this page, when the user clicks on this sign up, they'll get a sign up form here. And when they click on login, they'll get a different form. And Flutterflow has a specific widget for this. It's called a tab bar. And these two labels come with the tab bar widget, so we don't have to individually put those in. Okay, but how are you supposed to know that there's this specialty widget? Well, there are two questions you can ask. If a layout or an element on a page has either a complex interaction or layout, then look for a specialty widget first. So regarding complex interactions, if you've got a TikTok style layout where you're swiping up and down, that would be a specialty interaction or maybe swiping cards left and right, like a Tinder style UI. Those are complex interactions, and we have individual widgets for those. A complex layout would be something like a Pinterest style layout, often called a masonry layout. And they're complex because if you think about how to actually build them with things like columns and rows, you'll find yourself either not being able to do it or having to manually configure a bunch of things. So if either of those are true, check the widget category catalog and see if there's a specialty widget. Okay, so we know we're gonna need a tab bar in here, but we'll wait to add that in because that's part of our second step, which will be to group these individual atomic widgets. So let's just hold off. Next, we've got these elements in here, which are text fields right down here. So let's drag a couple one of these out right here. One, two, and three, beautiful. Now we know we're gonna need a duplicate version of this in our login, but those will have the same structure, so we don't need to fill those out right now. And then finally down here, we've got just a plain old button, beautiful. Okay, first step in the system is done. The second step is to group close widgets. So any widgets that are close to one another or should be a group, group them into one of three widgets, a column, a row, or a stack. Well, why a column, row, or a stack? Well, those are gonna be the main layout widgets that you'll use to build most UIs. Why? Well, because if you think about it conceptually, mostly everything is either stacking on top of one another or stacking next to each other or layering on top of one another. Those are all the main things you do. And this is a really helpful insight when you're building UIs because building UI in Flutterflow should be easy because you're just stacking things next to each other or on top of one another. That is, you're just using columns, rows, and stacks over and over and over again. So let's do this here. Is there anything near this image right here? Nope, so we can pass on. What about here? Well, yeah, these are like together. So what should we group these in? Well, should it be a column, a row, or a stack? Well, these are stacked on top of one another, so that's probably a column. So let's pull one of those out. Beautiful. And I like to keep mine in this tree-like structure so it's indented here, so I know that these are children of that element. Okay, lastly, we've got a button down here and there's nothing else in here, so that's fine. All right, so let's just move these right here and align them with the proper sibling in the hierarchy. Okay, so the third step is to ask if any of these elements need any background styling. Because if they do, we need to nest them inside a container because that's what a container is for. It can provide background styling and constraints on height or width. 
And how do we know if it needs background styling? Well, does it have a background? So does this image have any background styling? Well, no, it's just the logo itself. Then we move to the next element here. We've got our column with these three text fields. Does that have any background? Well, no, it's the same color as the background of this whole screen. And then finally, our button, that doesn't have any background either because the whole thing is the button. All right, great, third step done. Now we go back to that second step and repeat the second and third steps over that is group elements in close proximity and then see if that needs a background. And we do that until we've got one widget, one element that everything else is nested in. Okay, so right now we've got three elements right here, three top level elements. So an image, a column and a button. We already said that this is gonna be nested inside a tab bar. So let's just throw that in while we're at it. So let's just pull this down over here and grab our tab bar and put that up because actually that'll be the element. Okay, so now we've got these three elements right here. And our next step is to group close elements in either columns, rows, or stacks. Now, of course, we're moving up in this hierarchy, so they're not gonna be as close as other things. So for instance, here we had these text fields which were closest, but as you're moving out, they're gonna be further away. And we've reached the extremity, the extremity, extreme of our distance. We can't be further than where we are right now, which is good because that means we're almost done. So let's just visualize the things that we have left here. So we've got this element right here, and then we've got this element, which is our tab component with everything in it. And then finally, we've got our button. And let's just give it a little more space there. So we have these three elements right here. And sometimes it's helpful to draw boxes around the things when you're troubleshooting layouts. So right now, we wanna group these elements in either a column, a row, or a stack. Well, these are stacked on top of one another. It literally looks like this. So let's add these all into a column. So let's just delete these right here and grab our column and throw all these elements into that column. And then we ask our third question, does this element need a background? And you might say yes, because this is a off white color, but we can set the background color of our root widget, our scaffold widget. So we actually don't need to add an extra container for that. You can if you want, that's totally fine. It won't slow down your app or anything like that. And some people like that as a design pattern, but we're not gonna use it here. Okay, this is great. So we've got our widget tree set up. So so now this will make it easy to actually build this in Flutterflow. So we're gonna go into our login page and add a column with an image, tab bar, and button. So let's go do that. All right, so we're here in our login page and we can just delete this app bar because we're not using it. We've already got a column set up here. So let's just add in an image here and don't worry about the sizing right now. We'll deal with that in the next step. We've got a whole system where we're gonna deal with that. So then let's add in our tab tab bar, so just search for tab and drop it in, and let's collapse that. It's helpful to work with each layer in the hierarchy, so I'm just gonna collapse that. And then finally, we want a button, beautiful. Next, let's go into our tab bar right here, and we don't need three, we only need two, so let's go into this third tab and just delete it. And let's just rename our tabs here, so this is gonna be sign up tab and sign up page and then login tab login page beautiful so the tabs are these headers and the pages are the content itself and if you remember inside our tab bars we have a column with some text fields so let's come in and let's delete our text here we can shift click to select both and you can see it's multi-selected and just delete then come into the pages right here let's start off the sign up page we want to add a column and inside that column we want to add a text field right there we've got our theme widget styled already so let's just grab that let's remove that padding and then we're going to duplicate it three times for the sign up and then we can just copy this whole column and then paste it into our second page over here we only need two because we don't need a confirm password field and we're all ready all right so that's it our widget tree is ready but you might think, wait, this doesn't look right. Like it looks almost nothing like our designs. And yes, you're absolutely right because when you're designing your pages, there's two steps. 
The first is to get your widget tree correct, and second is to handle the styling, the padding, and the spacing. And it's helpful to keep those as two distinct steps in your mind, because if you get them mixed up, sometimes you'll make mistakes with how you lay out your widget tree when you're trying to accomplish something that should be handled with styling properties. So the first step is always to get your widget tree correct. Then you can move on to the styling. Okay, so on to the styling. And here we're gonna walk through four or steps. The first one is to set heights and widths. That is, things that have determined and static values. And we start here because we know that these are things that can't change. There's no other way to do it. We know the widths. We know the heights of things. And you just want to work down from the top. So let's start from the top here. And we can start with our image, which should be our logo. So let's come in here. And here we have the image type. We don't want it from the network that is getting it from a URL, but we want an asset that we upload. So let's upload our logo, and we want the box fit to be contain to make sure we can always see the logo, and we want the width to be 120. Let's remove the height so it sizes itself, and that's good. Now, I know that the alignment isn't correct. That'll be our next step. Right now, we're just setting the determinative things. Next, we've got the styling of our tab bars right here. And if we don't remember which style it is, of course, we can go back to our design because we set it up properly. And when we select it, we can see that it's headline large, beautiful. So we have it selected. We've got the tab selected. That's this header thing. And so when we edit the style, it'll bring us in there to our label properties and we can select our headline large. And let's set our text right here. This is sign up and this is login. Finally, we don't have any of this line in our design so we can just scroll down and grab our tab bar style color and just make it fully opaque beautiful next we've got these text fields right here and first let's go through and set our widths for our text fields now by default they are going to stretch to fill their parent but it's good to be explicit when you can so I'm gonna select these both right here so I can do it at once and set it to infinity that'll take up all the space that its parent allows and do the same same thing in our sign up here, select these three and set it to infinity. Next, let's set our hint text. That's what you'll see in that light gray right there. So let's look at our design and see that we need email address, password, and confirm password. So we'll just click off to deselect so we can select the first one right here and go down to hint text right here. And this will be email, password, and confirm password. It's also good at this time to rename the widget itself because this will be especially helpful when we set up the logic for this login. So this one is confirm password. And because on one page we have both sign up and login, I find it helpful to append that to the front. And you'll see why later. And this will be sign up password and sign up email. Beautiful. And let's do the same thing for login. You can see we're getting closer to this design. Last thing, we've got our button down here. So let's apply our theme style right here. And we want to fill the whole width. So let's give it that. Beautiful. All right, first step is done. We set all our heights and widths and determinative things like type. And now we need to set alignments. And this is alignments on our columns, rows, and stacks. So let's start from the top here. And it's helpful to close up the children of widgets so you can see exactly what you're dealing with. So we've got our column here and it has three children. So this top logo right here, our tab bar, and our button down here. So if we come into our column here and look at our alignment properties, first we've got our main access size. We set it to maximum, so use the maximum amount of space. And so this will fill the screen here. Then we've got our alignment right here and it's set to start. So everything is pushed up at the top, but that doesn't seem like what's going on because it seems like that's true for these top two things, our image and our tab bar, but not our button down here. So what's going on? Well, this actually reveals a really important thing to understand about all widgets. And that is by default, every widget will either try to be as big as it can or shrink down to be as small as its children. If it has children, if it doesn't, it'll have a specific size. And our tab bar here is trying to be as big as it can. 
Well, we don't want that because our design looks like this. So it looks like our tab bar element right here is in the middle of our screen and these two elements are pushed off to the edges. And we've got a perfectly good alignment property for that in our column. It's this one right here, space between. So that's saying take all the rest of the extra space and put it between the widgets after you push them off to the edges. So if we were to click it right here, you see nothing would happen because that's already what's going on. It just happens to be that first, our tab bar is taking up all the rest of the space. So when it goes to distribute that extra space, there isn't any space left. So how do we fix this problem? Well, this is where the almighty container comes in because we can set all of the height dimensions on a container. So let's come over to our tab bar and let's use one of the most important shortcuts that you want to learn and that's the wrap command and you use this when you have a widget but you want it to be a child of another one you want to wrap it in another widget and so you use command or control b and here we just select our container so now let's come down to our container height right here and i know that i want it to be 255 pixels except for nothing happens and that's because up here in our expansion property when we added in flutterflow automatically added this expanded property and flutterflow will often do this that is if you take some action that'll make the layout break it will fix it for you. And what's happening here is that expansion is a property that occurs inside columns and rows and is designed to deal with the extra space in the column and row. And if this wasn't turned on and we just added a container without any height, because that's how it comes in, it would try to be as big as possible. And this is where the error comes in. It's one of the most common errors you'll run into, an unbounded height error. That means the column is looking to the children to see how big it should be. And when the child says, give me everything, give me infinite amount of space, it doesn't know how to lay those children out because they're each looking to each other for this size constraint. So it just breaks. But now that we've added a height in here, we can turn this off right here. And there we go. Our layout is now acting as it should. So if we come back to our column right here and we situate it back to start, you can see it's acting the way that we would expect. The last alignment we need to take care of is our cross axis alignment. So for our column, our main axis is vertical because that's what a column is. It's stacking stuff vertically on top of one another. So the cross axis is horizontal. And we can take care of the alignment of our logo here by setting our cross axis alignment to start. Beautiful. Two steps down, two to go. Our next one is item spacing. That's this property here in columns and rows. And we really have only one place that we need to do this. It's in these columns that have the text fields. So let's go in there. I'm going to click in and press arrow up to get to that column. Of course, you can expand this like this. And we're going to add 12 pixels of item spacing. Now, you see that when we did that, now we're overflowing our container right here. So let's just go back up to our container here and drag it out so that we don't get any overflow errors. Then we need to do the same thing on our other column. Let's go down and add. Add 12 pixels of spacing and beautiful. Our last step is padding. So where do we need padding? Well, we would need to push all of this stuff off the edge here. So let's go into our top level column right here and add some padding on all four sides. And let's add 24 pixels. And that's it. Our layout is complete for this page. In the next video, we'll set up the logic. That is, we'll make this page actually work so that the user can sign up and log in. And we'll see you in that video.